we'll just put a little bit on here like that. And now, Gary, can you say hello grain? Hello grain. This is my favorite part of the entire guitar building process. You can actually see little bubbles coming up and so I work at it from two angles because what we're trying to do is, is fill these tiny little, um, almost hard to see, but they're there, these tiny little pores. We're trying to fill it deeply with epoxy. And the epoxy uh, stiffens the back a little bit, not a lot, because we sand a lot of it out. But it fills the pores and it, it's totally transparent. So it enables the grain to come through nicely. And this first coat, it'll just suck in like a sponge. So it'll even look like there's some dry spots, but they just got really absorbed. Um, subsequent coats will sit on top and they'll just go on like silky smooth and we won't even have to use as much epoxy. This is kind of like when you um, when you wet a, a dry dish rag a lot of the water goes into the dish rag and just stays there. You can feel it drying already. Makes it look different doesn't it Gary? Oh my goodness it just looks it's just popping. Yep. That's the right word. That's the technical word. <laughs> pop. Yep. Grain pop. <laughs> That's what they say. This will really pop. We have to mix up some more. That's the first coat. That's very porous wood. Some woods you don't need to do this because there's no pores. But I always use epoxy because it enables you to really flatten it. Because you're you're I'm adding a couple thousands of an inch to the thickness of the back, and then you can sand it down, and it'll sand down the high spots but not the low spots. So you can use it as a technique of really flattening the back so that when you eventually buff your finish, it, it's got that. How you know people say, how do you get it to be a mirror? Well, the mirror has to, a good mirror is flat, so this helps. Okay, now he's going to systematically work it in every direction. Oh, I can see that curly maple, curly yes. walnut. Oh, I mean, like the even the maple strip there. Oh yeah, just yeah. popping as well too. That's right. Yeah. it off and using quite a bit of pressure because I actually I don't want hardly any residue on top only what stays so the idea is you're stripping it off but it's staying in the pores and we'll do two coats let this dry this has to dry like 12 hours 18 hours do one coat a day basically if you draw if you try to sand it too quickly it's gummy Gums up your sandpaper. If you let it dry fully, then it dries like a like a powder. There we go. She looks better going this way. Probably lift the grain more somehow. Doesn't smell, eh? A little bit, but not. It's not really that strong. It's not like that lacquer. No, no. It's not a lacquer based. It's acetone based. Which is not what you want to put in your kids' milk, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's not like lacquer. Now you really don't want to leave ridges because those ridges, epoxy doesn't shrink much when it dries, so those ridges become little mountains you got to sand out, but epoxy dries hard. Really hard. 
for round one, that's not bad. On the final coat, you would see me taking a lot more care. That's wicked. Isn't it? 